when we look at wild budgies, we only see green budgies. But then again, we look at our beloved pet budgies. Here, look at my aviary. They are so colorful. Why? How come my budgies are so colorful, while wild Australian budgies are all green? Aren't they the same species? Let's see why. Well, as we already know, there are dominant genes and there are recessive ones. Usually, when we refer to a gene as dominant, we mean it is dominant to the wild type gene. For example, dominant pied budgies are dominant, which means it's enough to introduce one of them to wild budgies and we let them breed. That will ensure us we will have wild pied budgies. Let's start with that. If this gene is dominant, why aren't there any pied budgies in the wild? Actually, the answer lies in this exact sentence. Since pied is dominant gene, it's enough for only one budgie to be pied to start a chain of a whole lot of pied budgies in the wild. And since we know there aren't any pied budgies in the wild, so we can scratch this possibility of having pied budgies in the first place. Now this might raise another question. How did we end up with pied budgies if there aren't any pied in the wild in the first place? Well, don't worry, we will come to that later in this video. Just be patient. Now what about recessive mutations, like blue budgies? We know in pet budgies there are almost as many blue budgies as green ones. Why aren't there any blue budgies in the wild? First of all, unlike dominant gene, the recessive gene could easily exist in the wild. Because if any budgies carry the blue genes, that doesn't mean it's blue. There are a lot of green budgies that do carry the blue gene. We know from my Punnett Square video that green budgies could either be BLBL with double green gene or BLBL with one being blue and one being green gene, since the green is dominant over blue, and it will express itself in the phenotype, or in other words, the bird will be totally green bird. If you forgot how the green gene works, go check my Punnett Square video, because we will use it to calculate probabilities in this video as well. Now let's see, what is the probability of having a blue budgie in the wild? For the sake of this video, let's assume that 50% of wild budgies have BLBL with capital B, or in other words, double dominant green gene, and the other 50% BLBL, which means they are green budgies carrying the blue gene. If we make all the Punnett squares, and calculate the probability to have a blue budgie in the wild, we can either count the squares and see how many blue budgies we get. And we can see it is 1 out of 16 squares, or about 6% of wild budgies will be blue. Or if you don't want to use the Punnett square, we know we need both parents to be carrying the blue gene in order to have a blue chick. And since we assume there are 50% of them, that means we need the mother to be carrying the blue gene, and the father as well. So we multiply 50% to have a green budgie carrying the blue gene, by 50%, because that's the same probability. And we get 25%. And we know the probability of having a blue chick is 25%. So we multiply by that, and we get 6.25%, which is about 6 blue budgies per 100. As small of a number as it is, 
we should still see a lot of blue budgies in the wild, since they go by the thousands in the wild. Unfortunately, the sad truth is, these birds can't really survive for a lot of reasons. The most obvious one, they don't blend within the group. So this blue budgie will stand out among all the others in the flock. And any predator like hawk will head right straight for this budgie. Another reason, blue budgies don't blend in the environment either. If you look at the wild flock, they easily blend in the environment surrounding them. However, blue budgie doesn't. And whenever it heads to eat, it really stands out in front of the eyes of any predator. And it will be in a serious risk. Another unfortunate reason for blue budgie is that other budgies would prefer to mate with the green budgie to have a better survival chance. And since they are that smart, they know this blue budgie will pose them to unnecessary risk, which can lead them to dangerous situation. So there is a big chance this blue budgie will get attacked or killed by its own flock. With that being said, in nature, mutations do occur as frequent as it is in pet budgies in captivity. But now we know that in the wild, these mutations that pose threat to other flock members would either not survive due to predators or by getting attacked by their own flock members. Although blue budgies have no chance, but other mutations do stand a chance, like cinnamon or opaline budgies. You could encounter these mutations in the wild, because these mutations, while they are not perfect like the normal one, but they do blend in the wild. I will leave links in the description for these mutations, if you want to see for yourself. And actually, that's how we end up with dominant mutations, because mutations do occur all the time. In the wild, these mutations are fatal, but in captivity, they are not. And that's why you don't see them in the wild, while you see a lot of them in captivity. Especially the dominant ones, since they can easily be transferred from the parents to their offspring, and express themselves in budgies. While in the wild, if any of these dominant mutations occurs, it will be the last to be seen, as it is fatal. For more about budgies, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are watching this video from YouTube and hit the bell icon to get notified when the next video is up. Or like the Facebook page if you are watching this video from Facebook.